What's up everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Games Up. My name is Cameron McCulloch Keeble and I am your host and I am joined here by the literally one and only this week, Lawrence Titley. I'm very sad and all alone because Cameron's not really company. Oh, that's that's nice, thanks. G- gotta start with a, with a parting shot. Parting <laughs> shot, starting shot. But, uh, we, should, um, we should do a podcast with little party poppers. Hmm. When we reach a, a, a good number. Little... Yes. So you may notice, ladies and gentlemen, or may know that we have changed our recording format a little bit, but hopefully you won't notice any difference. Uh, we're doing things a bit differently, but not that differently, so let's start off, as we do every week, with the news. There are only 17 headlines, probably the biggest change in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> there are only 17 headlines, he says, this week, so here we go. Uh, a new game is coming exclusively to Nintendo platforms. Uh, the game, The Penguins of Madagascar, based off the popular movie franchise, is coming to the Wii U, the 3DS, and the Wii. That's... That's... The Wii. Okay, right. I mean, cool for Nintendo, but the Wii. Yeah, I presume you get to slap I... people with a with a, with a nunchuck controller. I mean, that's yeah. all the Penguins really had going for them. Oh, that'd be great if the game was just 15 Penguin hours slapping. of slapping your friends with remotes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, cool. It's it, it's okay. It the Penguins is, are fun. It's a film spinoff. So they're a good. They're a good um... And we is the film spinoff platform. Yeah. So there so... you go. Number okay. two, as we discussed in our last episode, uh, Batman Arkham Knight has had two collector's editions revealed. The first features a statue of Batman, an art book, a comic, and a game with DLC. The second replaces the statue of Batman with a full, transformable, fancy, extremely expensive Batmobile. Uh, they retail for 80 and 170 quid, respectively. Uh, the game also got a release date of June 2nd, 2015, and I cannot wait to buy one of those. Well, if it has, like, an actual... Batman, that's far more. I presume getting it for 170 um, quid would be pretty cheap, you know, for a if it had an actual small Batman tank, build, yeah, you would expect right. to pay considerably more than 170 quid. Would you mind not flicking your legs at the thing that's holding the microphone up? Uh, that would be really yes, great. Yes, I would. All right. Sure okay. Here we go. Yeah, a lot later than expected. People expected the game to come out in October, as it's based around Halloween. Well, yes. Um, but, um, who, who's the studio that's doing? Is it the one that's been doing the uh, that did City and? Yeah, it's Asylum City. It's Rocksteady, who were based in London. Asylum City. Okay. Well, you would expect rather more competent releasing dates from them. Well, but you know, presumably well, something came up. I mean, it's going to be good for the game. It will mean better quality. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it is now. Presumably, you'd you'd be better off releasing it a little closer to Christmas, in which case. Well, you see that, but when you think about like the way game droughts work, right? June mm. is a fairly good time to not have a lot of competition. Yeah, it's true. If um, but there is a reason the droughts exist, I suppose. Mm. Start of the year, you've got Witcher, Bloodborne, The Order. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's going to take that audience. End of the year, you've got Tomb Raider, Uncharted Four. Um, but these things Halo all, five because people buy more things at Christmas. That's one most of the reason why the drought exists. It's, it's yeah, but it's a good way. It's a, turning up in your stockings. Yeah, but it's also a good way of making gamers go. Oh, there's nothing else on at the minute. Mm-hmm. Those people who wouldn't usually pick up Batman might now pick up Batman, which is a cool way to do it. Indeed, yeah. And it means it's after we finish uni, so I don't have to worry about taking the time to play it. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Number three, Ubisoft have revealed the Assassin's Creed Americas collection. Uh, it is a collection of the games set around the USA. It features Assassin's Creed 3, AC Lib, uh, Liberation, Assassin's Creed 4, but not AC Rogue, and it releases early October rather than when AC Rogue comes out. Are they trying desperately to convince themselves that setting Assassin's Creed in a place that isn't a giant sprawling city, i.e. <laughs> anywhere that's ever been built up reasonably, um... Well, it's not a bad idea. Perhaps. Perhaps they're maybe. trying to convince us. Maybe. Maybe they are. Um, if, if you are an American, it's 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 fine. I, I... American now would be great for America would Creed. be perfect. I'd love to see like Assassin's Creed in New York as it stands now. That would now. be amazing. Or as we like... call it, uh, Spider-Man 2. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That would be... I'd love to play that game. Yeah. That would be really good. Um... It's weird to me that they're making, taking the effort to do a collection on previous gen consoles, but not packaging in the new game for a little bit more money. 
Mm-hmm. Because I don't know that many people are going to be picking up Rogue as are picking up the new Unity one. And normally that's how you pack, normally you put them in bundles, that's how you get people to play them. Yeah, yeah, mm. certainly on consoles that are beginning to become outdated. Mm. So Maybe they're, maybe they've just abandoned this one as, uh, uh, coll- no, not collateral damage, uh, cut their losses. Yeah, maybe, although I suppose there are people who haven't played those games who'll pick that up, so it's free money. Mm, so. I suppose. Number four, an ESB... ESRB rating leak has suggested that Rocksmith 2014 edition is coming to the Xbox One and PS4. The product was also seen on Amazon Italy but was quickly taken down after being found. Right. Rocksmith is a really interesting idea for a game. Uh, I would have thought you'd be more of a rock mason or a rock... <laughs> rock cutter? No, I don't know. Um, rock lobster? Maybe. It could be a rock lobster. Rocksmith? Is, is this some kind of... You plug a real guitar into it and it teaches you to play. Oh, clever. It is quite clever. That is, yeah. Apparently it works really well. I've yet to play it. But I think it might be at a thing somewhere. Uh, number five. <laughs> You'll like this one, I think. In weird news, KFC have revealed a whole bunch of fried chicken-based PC accessories for Japan to celebrate <laughs> their 30th birthday there. <laughs> Wait for it. The set includes a drumstick mouse and a fried chicken keyboard, the letters of which are replaced with plastic fried chicken pieces, all except K, F, and C. (laughs) (laughs) How do you... (laughs) Presumably this is for touch typers. Touch typers who apparently associate the feeling of chicken with touch typing. (laughs) (laughs) They must be saying something for the the greasiness of the... I love the idea that KFC is selling this keyboard just so that people can type nothing but KFC endlessly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and reflect on the terrible purchase they've made. See, I'm imagining this horrible kind of keyboard made. It's I can actually show you made anyone. out of chicken. That's like with, with struts made of chicken bone and <laughs> oh, Jesus. chicken leather making the backing. There you and... go, there's the KFC keyboard. Oh my god. <laughs> the... I love the addition of the drink at the top. It's a horribly fleshy monstrosity. Also, I think they've replaced the function button with the kernel for some reason. Like, you go for the space bar or the enter. There you go. They also have a, a fried chicken USB device, if you want it. And some earrings. So, that's the Japanese news for the week done. Number, right. s- number six. EA is working to fix an issue in The Sims 4 where players co- were not permitted to upload characters whose names featured words to do with being gay. Uh, The fact that this is introduced in a game where same-sex relationships are openly a thing makes this seem even more ridiculous. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is someone still clinging to the idea that gay is used exclusively for insults? And sweary words? Maybe. I I suppose they might have put the filter in place to stop trollers. But why would you have filter anyway? Yeah, but it just seems like a silly filter to put in the first place. Like, mm. you, you, you'd think that you'd just be able to call your character, uh, I don't know, Jonathan McGay. Cocksmith, to go Cocksmith. to the top of yes. it. Yes. Uh, no, that you'd be allowed, because that doesn't have um Oh no, you're just talking about chickens. Specific words. Someone who... Yeah, who, of course, of course. What, so you can't do any... You, you can but, do gay-specific words, but you can't do you, normal you, swear words. You uh, No, you can't do gay-specific words, but I believe you can do normal... So there's probably Why? a limit on it somewhere, but you, can, like, you can't have the words like gay, lesbian, queer in the name. That's a little for some bit reason. weird. It's odd, certainly. What? You think somebody would have checked before this thing went live. Yeah, but, I get the impression that some developers not talking to each other. Yeah, that could very well be the case. Number seven, the Xbox One October update has been announced. It features updates to the Snap achievements and Smart Glass functionality. Uh, it also gives users quicker access to their uh, through their controller to things like their achievements, friends list, and the game DVR, which is a feature that's been much requested since the launch of Connectless Bundles. Right, so did, did they work out that it wasn't a particularly user-friendly interface? Kind of, yes, but also because of the Connectless Bundles, you can't do the saying Xbox right. go to blah 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 okay so now they've made a way to access it as quickly so they originally set this out to have the connect not just as an add-on as a pretty integral feature yeah presumably absolutely. that's why they took so long to back down yeah yeah mm. absolutely fair enough 
Number eight, PlayStation 4 has passed the 1 million sold mark in the UK. Uh, it's the second fastest console to ever make the mark, only beaten by a few weeks by the Wii. I believe it took PlayStation 42 weeks and the Wii 38. Oh. There you go. Uh, congratulations to Sony and everyone involved and everyone who owns a console. There you go. Yeah. Number nine, Shadow of Mordor on previous gen consoles has been delayed by a few weeks. Uh, the game will now release on November the 18th and 21st in Europe and America respectively. Are they still milking the Tolkien cow? They are. They are oh milking God, the Tolkien cow. Although this actually looks like a fairly good game. Oh, well, fair enough. It seems it's like a fairly good game. Good game's gonna license. drop out of it, then... Just... Yeah. <laughs> good milk remains within blackened teats of, a, of an over-milked cow. You can't trust an animal that milks itself. I'll explain what that is after the show. Right then. Uh, number, t- <laughs> number 10, the iPhone 6 has been revealed. It's bigger and faster. It's bigger? That's, yeah, I, it I is thought, bigger I again. I thought that was a point not to have. No. You know the, you know the massive Samsung phones? Yeah. It looks like one of those. But mini- or there's a version of it. Miniaturisation. Like and, and they're so much nicer to use small, apparently. Mm. But it's doing, it's got the biggest day one pre-orders and that oh, kind of thing. So. Maybe it's the tablet they're just... Um, conning everyone to thinking that they're buying a tablet. It's a fablet. It's a fablet. A phone tablet. Uh, there you go. Mm, mm. <laughs> Number tablet. 11. Watch Dogs has been given a release date on the Wii U in Mexico. Uh, the game will release on November the 18th, although stories on this subject have been updated to say that's when the game's releasing across the world, but it was only originally confirmed for the Wii U in Mexico. Why Mexico? Don't know. Just the place that leaked it. Oh, right, well, okay, right. Presumably they're planning to, yeah, release it for other places too. Well, they are, they are. It's since well, come yes. out to be said that it's going everywhere. Although I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo were just going to... I don't know that this is the game that the Wii U needs at the minute. What do you think the game that the Wii U needs at the minute is? I think the Wii U needs more Nintendo support. We know that there's another Legend of Zelda coming. Yep. We know that it's got Smash Brothers uh, later in the year, or maybe early next year, depending on when they announce things. We know that they have a fairly good lineup coming from E3, mm-hmm. things like Splatoon and so on and so forth. Um, I don't know that big third-party AAA is what it needs. I think it needs to do Nintendo first-party well and small indie third-party well. The rank and file. Yeah, I think it needs to be the kind of console, a niche console, if that makes sense. It could probably also do with having some new IP, for one. Yeah, Nintendo new IP would be nice. And a Metroid game. A proper Metroid game would be nice. A lovely. Metroid game on the Wii. Well, uh, a proper... On the, on the Wii U. On the Wii U. Yeah. But, like, you could do a proper Metroid game on the Wii U, and the second screen could really help there, as long as it doesn't do, like, the hold up to snipe thing. That's weird. I can't talk with qualification on the Wii U. I stopped, I stopped buying Nintendo consoles around uh, uh, at the GameCube. You did. Have you ever played a Wii U? I have, yes. What uh, did you think? I thought that the motion controls completely detracted away from it because they were really awkward to use. Are we talking about the Wii or the Wii U here? No, we're talking about the Wii. We're not talking about the Wii. Okay. I haven't even seen a Wii U. I... Did you play a Wii U? I've played a Wii U, and yep. we should go to the city where we can play a Wii U. I found that the tablet is really big. Surprisingly big. Are we talking arm-hurtingly big? Not arm-hurtingly big, but like far too bulky to be a decent controller big. Right, like, okay. It feels like you're holding an oversized small tablet with buttons on it. Right. It's weird. I don't think it plays very well. But the Pro Controller is really nice. Anyway, at number 12, Destiny has become the most successful new IP release this year out, uh, and ever, outdoing Watch Dogs, which took the title earlier this year. Um, not a huge surprise there. This thing has had a a train <laughs> longer than... Yeah, it was the Watch Dogs of its, of its kind of... Oh, it was, it was more than Watch Dogs. There was hype it out was, the uh, butt for this game. It was uh, Grand Theft Auto V. I wouldn't say it was quite Grand Theft Auto Five because it didn't. We need we need an adequate scale to have pinned up at the uh, back of the office. Here, all right, okay, it? all right. Or um, it would be an office if we were in an office. If we're in an office, don't let them know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, a hype qualifier. Do you think uh, AC Three is that a fair? What was the one that Konami released that that completely? Oh, was um, zero hype at all. What, one... So hyped I can't even remember its name. Was that the John... so unhyped? Was it John Romero? The one that Yahtzee did a thing about, Daikatana. Maybe. No, that was hyped. That was hyped to hell. 
I'm referring to ones that, that it was a Konami that was released recently, and uh, it wasn't Konami that released that. It was Ion Storm. I have Storm. no idea. Ah, oh, I don't know. It was. It was very hype. Can the point Konami are bad at hype. You know, I'm against <laughs> hype. I'm against hype, but Konami, uh, they're not. They don't even do advertising. <laughs> anyway. Going slightly off the tone I was trying to get with this news story. Congratulations, Activision. Yeah, congratulations, Activision. Well done. Uh, number 13, Sony is to close the PlayStation Network Store on the PSP. I know what you're thinking. The reason I've put this in is because the PSP still has a very strong player base uh, in Japan. It was only discontinued a couple of months ago, uh, and it frequently outsold the Vita when it was still being made. So maybe losing maybe cutting off a few of their players there so you talk about you talk about um having to buy new uh buy the same games uh again mm. for a different console yeah uh the one of the big things that killed the PSP was the fact that nobody was willing to buy their new games or at least in the um at the western world again for for a different console yeah but i suppose um it's a, a somewhat a different game for the... Um... But the PSP did fairly well, really. It did okay. I mean, Especially compared to the Vita. I remember Stefan had a PSP. I remember... I think Peter had a PSP. Maybe he still does, even. Hmm. Uh, lots of people had PSPs. Tobias had one. Yeah, I seem to... Yeah, yeah. anyway. Number 14. Microsoft has said that customers who have experienced large amounts of noise coming from their Xbox One consoles can have a new replacement to fix the issue. For free. Okay. Why Why is there noise coming from their consoles? Is, is the little ferret that powers it all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the hamsters are breathing a bit too heavily. Yes, they have asthma. <laughs> they have, they're asthmatic hamsters. They couldn't even shell out for <laughs> non-asthmatic hamsters. No, um, that's cool. Okay, it's cool. The problem shouldn't have been there in the first place, but it's cool that they're no, fixing the problem. No, but early adopters Did... are the ones who find problems, and it's nice that Microsoft is trying to fix that. Did they have a... Um, do the Xbox ones come with uh, the extended warranty that the Xbox 360 I did? don't know. I'll check that out while we read the I next story. I hope they do, especially in the, uh, in the um, early adopter stage. Yeah... The early adopter stage is a really interesting one to look at because it's the one that really should be rewarded the most, but by definition of what it does, can't be. Well, I would like the... to just say that a thing should work as well at, at the beginning because it should be well planned out. I don't know. It's, I think... it's like the early adopters of, of you know, Sim City, the most, the not the most recent one, the one before that, the one that servers crashed um, on yeah, the yeah. week that it released. Was that the most but recent one? Or? No, it was the that one was, before it. Well, it was the second most recent Sims game. It was the most recent SimCity game. All right, the, yeah. the, um The difference between a, a game specifically and a console is that, that when you release a console, people are going to put it in situations you can't test. Like, when we when I get an Xbox One and bring it back here, it's going to be put inside that media centre. Mm -hmm. And, like, that will force it to have heat closer to it, which they wouldn't necessarily be able to test to the same regard at... And I know that that's a bit of a crap no. excuse, but you can test... And the console will change over time and frequently improve. The Xbox One is a good example of being improved over time. So I don't necessarily think you can give early adopters the best. Uh, maybe we should I... save this for a topic of the week. Maybe we should, maybe yeah. Maybe we should. Number 15, uh, this is an interesting one. Robert Downey Jr. has been cast in the upcoming Assassin's Creed movie <laughs> as Da Vinci. <laughs> making him Iron Man before Iron Man. Indeed, much. exactly. Although um, a little more, um, little less alcoholic, maybe? No, no, I think, <laughs> no. No, I think given Mr. Downey's history, alcoholic is a good description. He, he um, brings alcoholism wherever he goes. He does. I hope he can do a good job of it. Because there so. are two big names attached to this movie now. One of them is the man making it and starring in it, who I have a lot of faith in. Uh, Michael Fassbender, the guy who played Magneto in that X-Men film. Yeah. He is a good guy. Old, non-sticky Irish accent. Yes. What? He was trying to do an American accent throughout the whole thing. Um, that that gradually came unstuck. As, yeah, as his the accent in the, in the Origins film isn't great. It's better in the new X-Men film. You should see the new X-Men film. I should film. probably I like see it. the once in Future King. <laughs> um, 
So he's the second big name to be attached to this, and if they pull it off, they could really pull it off for video game movies, and if they don't, there are too many big names attached to this for it to be something that goes under the radar. Uh, yeah, I a... Well, that's the thing. With, with, with films, you can throw enough money at them and they en- eventually do at least make their money back. I don't know. I would say, you know, John Haven't... Carter's a fairly good example of that. Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, these things... I think there are, there are lots of situations where films can have lots of money thrown at them and be placed at the wrong time and made in the wrong way and not do well. Traditionally... Um, video game films don't fly. Uh, video, uh, yeah, video game based films don't uh, traditionally. They tend to get panned. However, on the other hand, we've got all this talent going into it that it may be a little too big to fail. Or at least without some serious repercussions, if you see what I mean. Can I ask you just quickly, yes? what did you mean by the extended warranty that came with the 360? Uh... Or they came with an extended each each um, receipt came with an extended warranty. Don't think it did. Mine didn't certainly. I got a year's warranty on mine. Really? Yeah, I had to pay for an extended warranty if I wanted it from oh, the, the I place I bought it from. Hmm. What's that about? I always uh, took it as a piece of um, as, as a. Common knowledge that you could send yours back and get it and get it fixed, assuming you hadn't broken it open for for free. I don't think so. Anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll keep looking at that. Uh, number f- sixteen, Grand Theft Auto Five on next gen consoles has a release date. Uh, the game is coming out on November the eighteenth, and it was given an utterly gorgeous announcement trailer. Ah, that do you mean by stunning. utterly gorgeous? It's fucking beautiful. On next gen. Because the game is damn good looking on current gen consoles. And it... I've never... <laughs> been particularly fond of, of the graphics of the game. Really? No. In what sense? Well, I always found them a little too drab. A little too... I mean, realistic as uh, as whatever. But always felt a little too um, physically gritty. Yeah, that's a particularly colourful car. For for reference, Cameron just showed me... uh, I I showed him an image from the trailer, the one with the... Actually, no, one of the images that were released with the trailer. I I, I didn't find it particularly visually appealing. I know what you mean of GTA 4 and the ones that went before it, but I think GTA 5 is one of the most colourful releases in the series. Hmm. It's, It's a bright and vibrant game. Maybe I'm just too much of a, a, a have fan you of the... Have actually played it? I have, yes. Have you? Oh, okay. I have. Um, one could hardly escape playing that great behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, each to their own. Number 17, the big piece of news for this week, and I will put down my laptop, because now we're done. Uh, Mojang has been purchased for $2.5 billion by Microsoft. Pops open, can, worm, sliver out. <laughs> um, we stand on two different sides of this argument, I think. Rather. Not two polar opposite sides, but two somewhat different sides. What are your thoughts, Mr. Lawrence? My thoughts? Well, it's it, it, it's good that you were so interested in my thoughts, Cameron. Mm, yes. Mm. Mm. What are your thoughts? I don't like it. Why not? Mostly because Mojang has, for the most part, been a champion of the kind of independent, um, the the indie developer, and now they're going right from the having been the champion to being part of the problem. What do you mean by the problem? That's the a problem. fairly the problem. Well, I'm using this to signal that um, this is being part of a bigger argument about yes, AAA, about AAA games, games being all terrible and indie being all brilliant. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, that. Yes. My how all that shovelware to be <laughs> to put into quick context. I love indie games, but I also love AAA games. So I don't think one is it's just good an and one is evil. Game loving person, no. As people should be, I think. <laughs> be like me. You're wrong. Um, I am all for it as long as they stick to what they say. 
Okay. They are currently saying that they fully intend to keep Minecraft on all the platforms it releases on. It's not going to be that we're like next generation Minecraft is Xbox exclusive. It seems that what they're saying is Minecraft will stay as it is. And that seems like a smart move because it doesn't really like there's going to be more sales via all the platforms than via a few. So it seems like it's a smarter move for them to rake in all the money all over the place from it and give it to everyone. Yes, but inversely, that same um, that same attitude should have them saying taking all the IP they own and opening them up from to other consoles to develop with. Yes, but the difference which they don't do. Well, yes, but the difference is here that the the IP that they have taken started up now is already out of the bag. This is like the polar opposite of what happened with Tomb Raider. Here they've they've purchased an IP that is widely known for being accessible and available. Uh, and, okay. And they have said, we're going to keep it that way. We're going to... It's not going to be a system seller for us. It's not going to be an exclusive. It's just going to be something we own. Whereas... I'm not sure I... But... So you mean they're going to do a Facebook Oculus Rift where they buy it in entirety but, but leave it uh, largely unmolested? That's what they seem to be saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I believe them. <laughs> um, no, I, I... Well, I'll leave my greater grudge with Microsoft out of this particular one. I know what you mean. That it's it's hard to believe a big company when they say, hey, we're not going to milk this thing for all it's worth. We're not going to try and take this, this console that is floundering and try and use another thing to prop it up. Okay, well... Hold on now. Firstly, the console is not floundering. It is floundering. It's not floundering. PS3 is beating its ass. Yes, but PlayStation 4 is doing, like, Comet in the Sky well. The Xbox is not floundering. It's just floundering in relation to a very successful... It's it's doing better sales than its counterpart did. It's floundering against its one major opponent, because let's all... Nintendo's not a... It's not. Not a major player here. But, yes, but it's not... As floundering as it... It's not a floundering console. It's a floundering enemy. Yes. And it has the ability to become... You know, think about the... I don't think... I think the only measure that one of these competitors is going to be measuring themselves against is how well they do against their great enemy. Mm, I don't know. Okay. I think that's a that's a major measurement for them. Yes, but I don't know that it's the only I one. I think they'd be inclined to try and do something with Minecraft, but then very to try and do something with Minecraft that will help prop up the Xbox One. But I can't think of what they would do. The only thing I can think of them doing would be doing something like adding in something to Xbox Live, where you you know your servers work better on Xbox Live because we typically have the better... If they were going to do a terrible move, they could um, lock down all the... uh, basically make it only playable on Xbox One. I don't think they're going to do that. They've openly said in statements that they're not... It's staying on the They do have the ability to. They do. They do. They do. But I don't think they... And legally, they all also have the ground to do it. Yes, but I think at least they're saying that they're going to. And the people saying it have, for this generation, typically been the people who stick to their word. Phil, Phil think, Spencer and I the think people something saying... something great could have come out of this. I think there could have been a, a change um, in the heart of the AAA industry if Mojang were to march into it and take its ethos with it. But it hasn't. It's been cannibalised. Well, how... So I think this is a great trap. What change would Shame. you have liked to see? I don't know, so, ha- because ha- I can't conceive. But I would like a complete um, upheaval in the nature of triple A industry. Right. Okay. So how do you how do you think Mojang could have marched in as a triple A with their company ethos? Because I think that's kind of what's happened. It just it all it seems to me is that Mojang are staying as they are. They're just having their bills bills paid by Microsoft. I think they've been subdued. In what sense? I mean that. I'm inclined to say that all the all the non risk taking strategies when it comes to because Minecraft was risky. Yeah, absolutely. The graphics are terrible. It's completely the opposite of a triple A um, mm-hmm, nature mm-hmm. of a game. 
Um, there's none of the normal selling points, the the spunky hero and the and the love interest and all yeah, the yeah, things yeah. that buoy up a triple A game. And I'd love to see that just just that kind of outside of the box thinking had him been brought into the triple A, but it, it doesn't. It remains in the indie sector and we'll probably whenever and I'm inclined to say that as soon as Microsoft actually get their paws well and truly into it, either it's gonna die or it's not gonna evolve, it's just gonna stay as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, which wouldn't, I don't know, I would be unhappy about it, but I'd probably be less unhappy about it than if they put it, tried to stick a story to it, tried to adapt it to be more like a AAA game. I don't know that that's going to happen. Because I think... Nor do I. Because I think, I mean, firstly they've said Mm -hmm. that they are going to use their their um, method of feedback that they have for the Xbox One for Minecraft, as they did for Minecraft previously, yep. it's community-led. The community come up with things and mod them in, and people go, hey, people at Mojang go, hey, that's cool, we'll put that in the game. Yes. They've right. said that's how this is going to work as it does with the Xbox One. Okay, that's so a fairly that's... clever business, and they have been known to do that before, because so they're not that's stupid. A, that's a good start. That means that the game is, in theory, for the short term at least, hopefully for the long term, going to evolve as it always has. So that to me suggests Minecraft is going to be the single game because why bother at taking all this suggestion and evolving it if you're going to, you know, alongside it develop Minecraft 2 for the Xbox One? That seems like a silly thing. So it seems to me that it will be just Minecraft doing what Minecraft does. And if if that's the case and, you know, Mojang is buoyed up with new developers brought in to do something alongside Minecraft, I'm all for it. I just hope Microsoft stick to their word. And I know, I know that's a silly thing to say, but this is a case of they're saying all the right things. They're saying all the right things, but before they have said all the right things as well, then. Yeah. Well, it's true, they didn't stick to their guns when they were saying all the wrong things. Yeah. Hopefully they'll, they'll stick to, all, to their guns when they're saying the right things. Certainly the person at the head of Xbox at the minute, Phil Spencer, is the man who says things and does them. He has said things of... How to fix Xbox, how to fix Xbox Live, how to fix... But he said an awful his lot of E3. things about the... Was... Has there been a... No, there hasn't been a sudden change. Changeover? When did Phil Spencer come in? Uh, he came in fairly... I think it was late last year. Huh. And they did have somebody So he had to deal with the fallout of Yeah, he, of had, he dealt with the fallout and is now Poor carrying man. on with it. He's done a damn good job. He's done, he's done a reasonable job. He's... he's I mean, it's difficult to, to do a reasonable job with that. But yeah, he's done a reasonable job with it. Go um, into that connect. <laughs> they they seem to be listening to people. And I know it's naive to say, I hope this big company that doesn't care about me sticks to their word. But so far, in the in the good things they've said, they've stuck to their word. And I hope this is a case where they carry on. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that Notch is no longer there. It is. But it seems to be a decision he's made for the good of himself. I have his statement here if we want to read it. Oh, what a shame. What, what is he going to do uh, with all that one billion? He said, I was at home with a bad cold a couple of weeks ago when the internet was splo- exploded with hate against me over some kind of EULA situation that I had nothing to do with. I was confused. I didn't understand. I tweeted this in frustration. Later on, I watched the This Is Phil Fish video on YouTube and started to realise I didn't have the connection to my fans I thought I had. I've become a symbol. I don't want to be a symbol. Responsible for something huge that I don't understand, that I don't want to work on, that keeps coming back to me. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a CEO. I'm a nerdy computer programmer who likes to have opinions on Twitter. And then he finished his his blog with a quick sign-off that said, It's not about the money. It's about my sanity. That's a sh- I'm not. One has to be careful about talking about these sort of thing because yeah. there are lots of ways to come off like an asshole. So yeah. I'm going to be careful. Yeah, absolutely, here. absolutely. I wish he could have been a CEO. Right. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think there was an opportunity there. But when, if he's not, then he's not. So you know, at the end of the day. What are you going to do? Tell someone that they have to be something that they uh, that is bigger than them? Well, um, and like also he has 
he's he's in a situation where he has the power to say I want to be smaller than this mm. and that's a cool situation to be in and it's kind of it's kind of nice that actually there is somebody in the gaming industry I like that he's made the comparison to Phil Fish because I like that what he's done is instead of going you can't have this instead of going I'm the most important thing here is going doing a Phil Fish can... yeah yeah instead of doing a Phil Fish he said you can have this out of my hands right and I kind of like that. Like, it's it's better than Minecraft dying. God knows the game is awesome. Mm. He probably... He, he would have been able to get it out of his hands another way. He, he probably would have been able to get it out of his hands other than Microsoft. True, true. He probably could true. have found... Um, he could have broken uh, the shares up under a wider range of investors that would have resulted in a less monopolistic... God, it would be really um, interesting if actually he'd sold it to the community. Yeah. That would be really interesting. That would be fascinating. That that I would prefer then, if he'd done that than... But then equally, you have a company of people working to develop it, and the community would have to support those people. And, well, you know. the community would support them in the stockholder characteristic, which is they would make decisions, but you know, ultimately the company should be turning profit. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's not the Microsoft paying Mojang's bills. Mojang's paying Mojang's bills the same way it's always done. This is an interesting situation. If Microsoft, if it didn't turn a profit, Microsoft wouldn't buy it. Yeah, the way I can see Microsoft making mo- money from this more so than the game is merchandising, the movie rights that were sold off. Yeah. Ages ago, that is movie now... rights to Minecraft. Yep, that's oh now definitely God. going to happen. I assure you, I can see them doing things with entertainment rather than the game. Like I could see a like Minecraft YouTubers. Mm-hmm. I could see there being series made of that rather than it just be YouTubers. I can see Minecon being an event where it's not just, you know, Minecon. It's Minecon, and it's sponsored by this person and that person. You know, I can see ways to diversify from the game that doesn't actually affect Minecraft at the heart. Which seems like not the most evil way of doing things. That was a motorbike. Ignore that. I suppose there are mechanics of Minecraft that you could take out and you could use in other situations. I mean, it'd be clever to see the game, not well, not cannibalise for its parts, but having parts used in the same way that Valve do their game development, uh, taken apart for them, um, useful. Yeah. Valve, Valve are a very interesting company. Yeah. I want to know what happens to Scrolls and Cobalt now. Uh-huh. Because Notch is no longer heading them up, clearly. So what happens to those games? Those I could see going Xbox exclusive. Presumably, uh, yeah. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, exclusivity is bad, as we've already talked about, but I would rather that those go exclusive and Minecraft be for everyone. Yeah. Unless they turn out to be as huge as. Um, I, I'm inclined to say that Microsoft probably isn't going to try and grab... Um, grab the whole of uh, try and herd um, the whole of uh, Minecraft, Minecraft into their um, corner and make it entirely exclusive because the yeah. cat is well. In- the cat's not out of the bag. The cat's bred with other cats, part of the small clan. Yes, of yes, cats yes. And Stuffing them all back in the bag. There isn't enough space in the bag. You can get more meat from a litter than you can one kitty. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> if we're going to use that. Well, they're going to skin this cat. So. <laughs> Um, but I've been wrong before, so yeah, we'll yeah. see how this we'll what, see how this blows over. Shall what's we? your final word on the situation? My final word. Um, I'm sorry for everything the internet's done to you, Notch. Uh, have a, um, a wonderful rest of your life. Yes. Um, my final words. I have been called a fanboy before. I will be called a fanboy again. I like to think of myself as just a fan. I have faith in what Phil Spencer says. Maybe we'll come back in a year and everything will be fine. Maybe we'll come back in a year and it'll all have gone to shit. Either way, I'll still play Minecraft. Good luck, Notch. Good luck to everyone at Mojang, who is now in the hands of a new company. Hmm. Cool. This is the the least headlines we've ever had. 
the longest news section. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that ballooned into a topic of its own right. It kind of did, yeah. Hmm. Do you want to do a topic of the week? I don't know. Um, do we have time? We well, we we have well, we have as, as much, much time, time as we, as we want. want. So, do you want to do a topic or? <sighs> Let's do a topic. Shall Let's we? do a topic of the week. Bring us the topic of the week, my man. Topic of the week. What was the topic of the week? What was the topic of the week? Bit of paper. I. You never had a bit of paper. No, I didn't. That's that's. I guess that's like losing it twice. Shall I talk about the indie game of the week and then you can think one up? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the indie game of the week this week uh, is one that I am very excited about. We. I wrote about it on my blog. If anybody reads that, uh, it's called the Sun and Moon. Uh, and it is a uh, an indie game that's coming to Steam later in the year. Um, it's a flash game at the minute, and uh, it's uh, we're going to see it at EGX, which will be really cool. Uh, it is uh, a two D side scrolling platformer, where the <laughs> it's a two D side scrolling platformer where the character that you control he's kind of a little blob. Um, the the character you control uh, can jump and jump high and move but it can also phase through the level so um and as if you phase through the solid bits of a level you're repelled upwards out of them uh which means that the puzzles that uh, are given to you um the puzzles that you have to solve require you sort of throwing yourself about the level to reach certain bits of it and it sounds odd like it's hard to give it to put it through and translate it properly into a, a description um, but I'd say you can play it online for free. It's just Google the Sun and Moon is the first link that comes up. Um, and it's a different kind of platforming game, I think. Um, it's not got the same... It, the difficulty of it is set by how well you control the thing rather than, like, timing and enemy encounters and the kind of thing, that the usual aspects you get of platforming games, you know? it's It's not like... A Mario platformer, you know, 2D side scroller where you have to avoid things. It's more about having to reach things um, and explore a level. And I think that's a really interesting concept for the game. Um, it's being released, as I said, on Steam and I believe mobile platforms later this year. Uh, Loz, you had a play of it earlier. What did you think? I, I thought that it was actually it was a fascinating little concept. I mean, it's as far as I can tell so far, it's... Um, well, it's a, it's a side scroller and it's a platformer, mm-hmm. um, and its concept is as far as I can see, it's the whole phasing thing, which can be manipulated wonderfully. It's if anything, it's a physics game. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it kind of is. It's yeah. a physics action game. Um, it's. I'd be interested to see how it progresses. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like to see if I, it could be done like a a three D game as well. Because it's one of those mechanics that is simple in its way, but as far as I can see, could probably be expanded massively. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I I'm, I'm interested in it. I think we should um, follow this particular one. We shall do. We may even try and talk to them at EGX. Mm. The art style is minimalist, and I, the 16-bitty, is that fair to say? Do you think? Yes. It, it looked retro. It four bytes. <laughs> It looked retro, if that's a term that you like to use, um, in its own way. And I think that's all that's there to say on that. Yeah. I yeah. Yep. Do we have a topic of the week? I think we should go with, because this, this one we've been saving, it's a nice one. Okay. A portrayal of problematic themes. The portrayal of problematic themes in gaming. How do you portray a problematic theme in, uh, in a game? Without con- uh, without condoning it, and um, but without necessarily having to hammer down the point that that yeah this is wrong this is really really mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. What's what's the correct line to draw when you've got some say historical event uh, with problematic elements to it? So what do you believe is how what's your line on it? What's my line? Yeah, I stand somewhere in the middle. I think uh, it's. I know that sounds awfully limp-wristed. <laughs> uh, I stand a little bit in the middle because I, you know, one, when you're dealing with a historical theme, two, just th- what got me thinking about this, we were playing, uh, oh, Cam was playing Dishonored and I was watching. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, and it was going through a mission with, uh, in a whaling 
factory. Yes. Um, and there's even one point where it'll um, where you can kill a whale. Yeah. Uh, it's part of the whole. Pun moral... not intended. <laughs> <laughs> moral choice of of the whole thing. Um, aspect of the whole thing, and I was thinking. Because um, this this has and in uh, Assassin's Creed Four this has attracted criticism of. Um, in AC Four there was a, a there were you could whale in the game because that's obviously what happened at the time and lots of uh, animal groups came out and said this is wrong because you're not openly condemning it you're not saying you know you can whale but you shouldn't. Um, so on one side we've got Dishonored using it as a kind of background piece. And on the other, you've got um, Assassin's Creed, who is actively using it. Neither of them passing a particularly loud moral ju- judgment on whaling itself. So I was what that got me thinking as to how it is that we should do these things. Now I, I'm inclined to say that you're allowed to use pretty pretty well every um, mechanic, every uh, setting. Including problematic settings, uh, to 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 make a game in. Yeah, you could you can have racist themes. You you can have slavery as a theme. Just mm-hmm. um, you have to clearly you have to not be condoning it in the actual action. You don't you have to it has to not have a strong moral overtone of. Um, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Yeah. If that's there, I don't think you have to. Uh, shout particularly loudly that this is a bad thing. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Because, well, just in the case of the AC games, lots of... This is a horror historical setting. There are lots and lots and lots of bad things. I mean, it's got a feudal background. Do we do we need telling twice that feudalism is a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. Knight, knights and whatnot, um, <laughs> basically with an enslaved cast of villains below them. You know, in the first six, few hours of AC2, your entire family gets hung. Yes. <laughs> do, do, do we? Should we have to slow down every single time and explain that this and this and this and this and this part of our setting is bad? Because if you do, there wouldn't be enough hours in the day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That being said, when it comes to particularly problematic themes... Stuff like rape. Yep. I would be very wary about using it as a um, as a setting, as a as a plot device or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Simply because um, with all these things, you have to be careful about not about who you're offending, but, but who's. Are you showing do you care for mm-hmm. the material you're handling? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's like, are you offending, but without the kind of, is it a reasonable offence? I mean, because there's a million miles mm-hmm. between someone complaining because their kid saw... Blood on the TV. Blood, blood on the TV and someone who has been subject to rape. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, seeing it being used as a cynical jibe to get money out of gamers. Uh, yeah, a box to tick. And, yeah. and generally, all around that sort of thing insults everyone because yes. you insult anyone who's had the the terrible experience of being in that situation, and anybody who ever knew, which is everyone. Well, and and anybody who plays that game and doesn't, you know, is not that kind of cynical dickhead. That you're you're using a si- whenever you use a serious thing as in levity. You're always offending whoever whoever you're supposed to be reeling in with this serious thing. I mean, the the main example of this recently was Tomb Raider, of course, where there was a big um, Tomb Raider gate, if you want to call it that, where they showed off a scene in which Lara Croft was come onto quite strongly by a, a male antagonist. And the two problems with this is that you didn't... A, it wasn't focused on. It was just something that happened to Lara, as though being Lara Croft... This was sort of expected. This is what happens to female heroes. This is, this is the the this is well. Voyeurism has always been a bit of a problem with mm. Tomb Raider, um, more or less, depending on who you ask. But but this is kind of the culmination of it. What I thought the real tragedy was in that situation was that they didn't use it as a motivation for Lara 
to do better things. It was just something that was Happened. passed by. Yeah. It it's like um when the cover of Far Cry was revealed and people um exclaimed about it that this is racist. I personally would have liked Ubisoft to say, Yeah, this bad guy's racist. Don't you wanna kill him now? Like this this is a bad of course, person. Of course he's racist. You know, that's that's one of the things we can add to the bad person. But instead it was kind of it was shied away from because it's hard you know, it's hard because they to... did, well because they didn't want to reveal more information about the game. Well, and more so than that, it's hard to explain to an a, the fairly broad audience that gaming has, be they young, be they old, be they you know, wh- whoever it's it's hard to explain and necessarily put into a good context how to use racism. Mm. Or any form of hard of difficult, you know, theme as we're talking about. Um, and so you can understand why they did it. The problem, what I found really insulting about the Tomb Raider situation was that we were just expected to assume that this was regular for Lara Croft, which was insulting for both Lara because she's just as valuable, she's just as badass and important as male heroes who don't get that. Yeah, it's it's out of place for a, for an action character, and it's insulting to the male characters to assume that. Just because they see Lara, like that, you know, you show them Lara Croft, and they see like, you know, like they do in Tom and Jerry cartoons, where they look at the cat and he turns into a steak. You know, like it's yeah, kind of it's it's wrong to assume that like Lara Croft gets what well, we're we're we're, tr- we're they're using as a kind of trope. Yeah, like it's um, just a coding convention of her character, and it the, shouldn't the, be. You know, sexual harassment is just what she can. You know, it's just, it's her thing. Yeah. And that was wrong. Um, um, which it never was in any of the original games. And even if it was, it would be just as wrong then as yes. it is now. Yeah. Um, I think my line, in, my line in the sand on this is um, those kind of themes should be explored. They should be looked at, but they should only be done in a way that is sensitive and um, carefully handled. You know, you can talk about whaling, you can talk about feudalism, you can talk about um, times gone past or or experiences gone past that are not socially acceptable now or that are considered wrong now, but it should be the actions of the the player that lead you to the decision, that lead you to the the morale that this is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. It should be the actions of the player, the person who... Um, involves themselves in this story and progresses this story forward that, that highlight... You shouldn't have to put signs on every whale you kill in Dishonored to say, by the way, don't do this. But you should feel bad enough if you kill a whale that you, you don't want to do that more. And it's and it's difficult to do this in a setting where you're creating the game in cooperation with the player. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, I've seen people play through um, the airport level on... Oh, on Call of Duty. No Russians. On uh, no Russian. Yeah. Um, and giggling, giggling away, and I'm like, you're supposed to be feeling bad. You're. This is supposed to make you feel like a shitty person. Yeah. But the thing thing is, with a game, it's not just holding you down and pouring the story into your face. No. And if you choose to giggle, there's no one in the room who can stop you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is a problem. Which is a problem. Um, another problem that I found, and this is more about just the strange irrationality of humans is that we get squeamish as we should around stuff like rape yeah absolutely but murder's fine murder killing people yeah. is straightforward um and you know it's hell i mean the main character can murder all he likes it doesn't seem to make a single dent um, on his respectability this is not I'm, I'm gonna bring in a quote from movies here because it's kind of the same case there as well mm-hmm. you've seen the wolf of wall street i have it's fairly ridiculous in what it shows. Yeah. It's an extremely graphic film, but... Needlessly the... so. Oh, well, you say that, but the, the main actress in it said um, Hollywood is more afraid of the idea of sex than it is the idea of murder. Well, yeah. And in terms of... Well, it's more afraid of sex than it is of violence, but rape is both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I mean by that is Hollywood is 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 
more accepting to the idea of murder, more accepting to the idea of needless violence, and that's true for video games as well, both AAA and indie um, video games in general. Yeah, loads of heroes murder, none of them rape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and they I'm shouldn't. Not, and they shouldn't. <laughs> Jesus. You know, obviously. But that's that's more about the, the the irrationality of a human being that we have in our some way, in our minds, made murder very bad in certain circumstances, but completely fine in others. Mm. I don't know. This is irrational animals. Either way, I think it's safe to say that we try and stand for good things in video games. Yeah, um, but try the middle ground. As always, your answer will probably be found somewhere in the middle ground. Do use freely um, th- uh, themes that have respect. Yes, absolutely. That's perfect. That's a perfect way to say them. And also, if you're a video gamer, play them from a mature standpoint. Try and... Don't giggle in, in no Russian. Well, Don't giggle. If you Don't be a dick. If you can't avoid giggling, so be it. That's your choice. But try at least to question the situations you find yourself playing along and consider, is this right? Um, and keep an eye on like games journalists who talk about this a lot. Mm-hmm. People like uh, Jim Sterling. Just generally engage yourself in things and question what you play. Yeah. We like that? We like that. I think we tried to be as... As progressive as we can there. <laughs> oh, I'm we worried come about... out as bleeding heart liberals. Oh, I'm worried about publishing this now. Um, <laughs> we don't. We mean well. Um, I think we're done here. I think we are. Right then, Mr. Lawrence, what have you been playing this week, and what will you continue to play next week? Uh, Dwarf Fortress and Dwarf <laughs> Fortress. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I, I will have other games. Promise. Will, we'll be playing Borderlands today. Yes, we will be playing Borderlands. I've got to progress more with my beautiful blue grass looking hero. Yeah, I, lo- I love the way you've designed your hero. Yeah. Uh, I have been playing Minecraft, of course. I have been playing um, Rainbow Six Vegas 2. I finished Dishonored, and I'm going to try and play. I'm not sure what I'm going to play this week. I'm th- oh, Halo Reach, because it's being given away free. So I'm going to pick my hands on that. Old Halo Reach around. Yes. What a, what a note to end on. <laughs> Progressive themes and reach around. We mean well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This has been the latest episode of Games Up. Thank you very much for listening. As always, we really appreciate it. I have been joined by Mr. Lawrence Titley. Hello. And I have been um, Cam... Oh, no, carry on. And no one else. And you have yeah. <laughs> And I have been your host, Cameron McCulloch Uh And we won't be doing one next week because we will be at EGX, but hopefully we'll have some really cool stuff to put up the week after. He's not going to be here. Ah, uh, <laughs> suck. Uh, <laughs> I have responsibilities. No, you don't. I can pretend to be an adult. <laughs> Uh, Thank you very much for listening, as always, ladies and gentlemen. But for this week, the game's up.